It is now 8.24 in the morning. And the Los Angeles Lakers played the Los Angeles Clippers tonight, battling for the fifth seed. My name is BDL44. I'm a Laker fan. And last night we won the game that we needed to win in a fashion that made me very, very upset. We didn't respect basketball in a lot of different ways last night, and we knew this game was looming. <laughs> we knew there's a bunch of old Lakers over there that would probably want nothing more than to beat us in both of these games. And we had to go to the brink with THT last night. Luckily, he missed a shot at the buzzer that would have tied up the game and sent us into a second overtime. <laughs> in snowy Utah with a flight to catch. We managed to get out of that game with a victory. And now that sets us up for an opportunity to not only compete, to skip the playing tournament entirely for the sixth seed, but to skip that sixth seed and get the fifth seed because of what Golden State has ultimately accomplished with their record. And us getting a chance to win that tiebreaker with them by defeating them in the season series. Tonight we face a Clipper team that's down a couple guys, potentially. Paul George definitely not going to play. We know he's out for a couple weeks with a knee. But I hear Eric Gordon is questionable for this matchup. There was another name that was questionable for this matchup as well. Marcus Morris Sr., fantastic shooter. Brother of our NBA champion guy, Markeith Morris. We haven't beaten this Clipper team in over... I'd say two years since the pandemic, basically. Tonight, the floor is theirs. The Clipper Arena, basically. We know our fans will be well represented as our city is always well represented when we come to town, play the Lakers, play the Clippers, whatever the case may be, it's going to be a Laker presence. But the Clippers have grown. Their fan base is stronger than it's ever been. The owner has endless pockets. They got some pretty exciting talent. And they're three days rested from their last game where they had a showdown with the Pelicans. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard went for 40, but B.I. went for God knows even more. I don't know how much B.I. went for, but he killed them. He really, really was smoking them and was able to edge it out. Russell Westbrook. Has been balling as of late. This Clipper team has have had battles with Memphis in a back-to-back. -back. You have to go there and play there twice. You know how that goes. We had that with San Antonio earlier. And then they had a battle like that with OKC. Split both of those with those respective teams. In some serious battles. But since Paul George has gone down, this team has been kind of going back and forth, man. They've, they've, they've had some wins, they've had some losses, but ultimately they find themselves in a position where they should be confident that they're going up against a Laker team that shouldn't be as rested as they are. Kawhi Leonard has been a surgeon, man. He's had games where he's only missed two shots on 15 attempts. Like I said, he went for 40 in the last game. We know what he's about. Nicholas Batum had a game where he went for 10 threes last week. <laughs> We need to be ready because I know he's going to be on the floor more if those other guys are out. Robert Covington has now worked his way back into the equation after kind of being phased out a little bit. He's now more of a, a prominent role player on this team once again, getting in passing lanes and hitting threes like he always has. He's getting steals. He can turn the ball over, though. And that's what I will say about this Clipper team. They have been turning the ball over a little more than they want to. Russell Westbrook's now on the roster, and we know he's capable of doing that. But he's a better version of himself. They play with a rhythm and a pace about themselves that more compliments him than anything we ever did. I'll tell you that. They look good. He looks good. And he's going to be ready to face these L.A. Lakers. We had better be ready tonight. Regardless of how much rest we had or how poorly we thought our performance ultimately was in spite, despite us getting a win against the Utah Jazz. We know that we got beat up. We allowed Dennis Schroeder to have to go up against... THT the majority of the game banging up a dude's basically twice his size we only played Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt 17 minutes so I'm hopeful that means that he'll be a little more energetic tonight since he was rested 
D'Lo didn't go. We don't know what's going on with the foot, but he's missed a lot of these games that we really needed him in. So hopefully he'll be available tonight because we're definitely going to need his talent level. His playmaking, his shooting, all the various things that he can do for us. It's going to be necessary tonight. So hopefully we'll have a full spectrum of players that can go out there because I know that Austin Reeves hurt his elbow, I believe it was. It's a little confusion about what that in injury actually was, but I'm not certain of his status. The injury report had not come out by the time I had made this video, but I did know of the questionable status of the players on the Clipper team. So that means that they're going to have to shuffle their roster around a little bit, try to make some things work for them that maybe they don't want to do, potentially depending on if Eric Gordon and Mark Morris will be out. But at the end of the day, they will have Westbrook. They will have Kawhi Leonard. They definitely will have Terrence Mann. Zubats will be ready. They're going to have Covington. And they're going to have a, a plethora of other guys like Plumlee. Who's going to be available tonight. And so we're going to have to be ready for this squad. They're going to be intent on trying to stay out of the playing tournament just like us. They have the same record as we do. With a 3-0 series lead and nothing that would make them happier. Than getting a victory tonight on their home floor against their hated Lakers. I ain't going to call them rivals because honestly, this has never been a rivalry. In fact, this might be the most important game these two teams have ever played against one another. I don't think there's any question about it now that you could, I consider what's on the line here. Because at the end of the day, these are two teams with cores that are known for their injury concerns. The Clippers are missing a guy right now that they need in order for them to reach their highest peak. They can't afford to play a one-game-takes-it-all type of situation, especially with a young team like a New Orleans Pelicans or OKC Thunder or Minnesota or whoever falls down to that space. They do not want to have to face those teams without PG. And so in this situation, I think they see this as the biggest game of their season, obviously with an opportunity to take on a team that basically they built this entire team to defeat. The Clippers did everything they could to put together a team that would defeat LeBron James and try to spoil his tenure here in Los Angeles. They even went as far as to have New Balance put a crown keychain in, <laughs> in a commercial that Kawhi Leonard ultimately was leading, saying that basically that he was the king of Los Angeles, as opposed to LeBron James. And, of course, the Lakers won a championship in the bubble. The Clippers have yet to win a championship, but the Clippers have won all of the matchups since. And that matters for something, especially to them. But we need to get this win tonight. It doesn't really matter that, that we haven't beaten them since 2020, before the pandemic hit. It doesn't matter that that was the last time we beat them because when we think about that matchup, that was the last most important game we saw the Clippers play. The Clippers were very good that year. And we had just beat the Celtics, if I'm not mistaken, or were about to. I don't remember which game came first, but we won both of those games to put ourselves in a position to be in first place, if I'm not mistaken. Or something like that. Whatever the case may be, the last time we had a meaningful matchup against this team, we beat them. We shot well. And we knocked them off the court. <laughs> Tonight, I think we have an opportunity to do the same thing. We have to shoot the ball very well. This team tends to give up three-point shots from what I've seen. They also shoot them very well, too, with all the players that they have that can shoot. But at the end of the day, what I will say about this team, this Clipper team, is they're a bit old. They are a bit old, man. When you look at some of that, some of the players on this roster, Covington, Plumlee, Gordon, Westbrook, Kwai, these guys, they're older. So they needed the three days rest, just like we needed the rest that we didn't get last night. But unfortunately, they got their rest, and I'm not so sure about us. But either way, we do have a few players that didn't play as much. So hopefully we'll get them on the floor tonight. You know, I think Lonnie Walker wouldn't be the worst call up tonight for this particular matchup. Because at the end of the day, you're going up against pressure on the rim and fast break energy. And you're going to need to match that. And Russell Westbrook's going to bring that in, in droves. And so will Terrence Mann. They're going to be driving. And I don't know how healthy our guys are going to be. Austin was banged up, as I said. Dennis as well. LeBron played 40, 40 plus minutes. AD played 40 plus minutes. We're going to need guys who were fresh to be out there. 
And so that's what it really comes down to. I expect high octane energy, physical energy, physical play. The officials will have a lot to do with tonight's game. You know that's coming. And everybody's watching. The NBA world is watching. The two Los Angeles teams are playing for something meaningful near the end of the season. We only have three games left, including this one. And this matchup is, means everything to us at this point in regards to what it is we're trying to accomplish. We've had a long season where we've tried our very best to get over 500. And we are secure in the fact that we will finish no lower than 500 because of what we've been able to accomplish after making the trade. But we still have a lot of things to work out. Our free throw shooting is not great. Our perimeter defense is not great. Our rotations can be better. And last night, all of those concerns reared their ugly head. And I'm not so sure what to expect from our Los Angeles Lakers because it took a lot of missed shots in order for us to have a chance to win that basketball game. A lot of THT bricks. <laughs> a lot. And of course, unfortunately for him, he missed the last one. Ultimately saved our backsides once again. So the way the Lakers played last night cannot be duplicated tonight if they expect to win. There's absolutely no way Kawhi Leonard and Paul, excuse me, and Russell Westbrook, because Paul is going to be out. But there's no way those two players are going to allow us to shoot as poorly as we did from behind the arc, play defense as poorly as we did, and have any success against them in a meaningful basketball game. There's no way. These are playoff players ready for a playoff situation. And we can't assume that Russell Westbrook's going to make any of the mistakes he made as a Laker. It's just not that situation. He's on a very small fraction of that type of contract to begin with. So his team is fuller. They're better. And he's a big contributor to that. And he's not coming off the bench. He's doing all of this in the starting lineup in rhythm. And a system that works for him. So his jump shot looks better. And he's turning the ball over as he usually does. But overall, the team just fits him and complements him better. So we need to be careful not to think that we're going to get any of the stuff that, that he would otherwise give other teams when he played for us. Things flying off of his hands, you know, missed shots that clank off the top of the rim. That type of stuff is just not he, the Clipper version of himself. Unfortunately, that was all exclusive to us. So we're going to have to deal with him at his best. I expect a triple-double tonight. I do. I expect him to go off. But there's one thing that I think we can have going for ourselves that could surely work in our favor. And that's the size and the talent level of Anthony Davis. He's been on a tear as of late. And even last night, he played very good basketball, even though his free throw shooting seems to be in his head at this point. Because he bricked about six of them last night. Six points that would have kept us out of that overtime. So I'm tasking with him to understand the importance of of getting out of his head and into the game because we need him to be at his best tonight because he is our trump card against this team. And I don't know if, if there'll be a situation where his doctor says he won't be able to play because that's possible. I just read somewhere that he said they're waiting for the phone call to let them know if he's still a go for this game since he played so many minutes in the last one. Also, LeBron James got to consider his foot and him playing in back-to-backs. He played a bunch of minutes, as we've already mentioned. So this is not the greatest situation with D'Lo also being questionable. You just don't really know if your team is actually going to really show up for this game tonight. But at the end of the day, it is a must win. We've worked hard to find ourselves in a position to fight for this fifth seed. And I would only imagine that everybody would want to give it their all tonight if they're able to for with this much on the line. Especially given how poorly they played last night and how lucky they were to be able to get out of there with a victory in spite of it. So this is where my mind goes. It pertains to this Los Angeles Lakers basketball club. I'm confident that we've won. What was it? Eight out of our last nine or something of that nature. We've been on a winning streak that is really impressive. But last night's win felt like three or four steps backwards. And I'm hopeful it doesn't start a trend that shows us going in the wrong direction because a lot of what I saw last night looked that way. 
like we were taking steps backwards defensively, like we were taking steps backwards in our effort and ultimately continuing to believe in things that have always shown us it should they should not be believed in. Like small ball and leaning on players that are not able to hit shots at all in Malik Beasley. At this point, I want us to move him down the depth chart and give ourselves Max Christie so we know who we know can play some defense and give us the length necessary to match up. And none of the deep, the rebounding deficiency issues, none of the opportunities to be hunted defensively like Malik creates for us when we put him on the floor. It's facts over feelings here because we know what it takes to win and we know we're not respecting those things by putting our feelings over our facts and leaning on players that cannot be successful in the circumstances we put them in. I want to see more Anthony Davis. I want to see more Austin Reeves. I want to see more Rui Hachimura because those are the players that have been hot as of late. Those are the guys who are going to help us get there. Letting LeBron James be the end all be all from behind the arc is not the way we need to win these basketball games. It's a way you can live and die, but it's not the smartest way to live, if you ask me. Not when you got Anthony Marshawn Davis on the team able to put up 40 points every night. Those possessions should have been in his hands. With the role that he's been in as of late, there was no excuse for some of that nonsense we saw down there from the King last night. And I'm not off of his backside in regards to it. Yeah, he won the game with the game-winning layup, but how many of those plays that the Jazz got came off of shots that he bricked? Things that we didn't rebound. How many of them three-point shots came off of rotations that he didn't rotate properly? He left a man open. It's too much. And our philosophy to allow three-point shooters so much disrespect, to leave them so much space in this league, you're playing with forces you should not, in my opinion. When you disrespect players to the degree that we do by playing off of them to the degree that we do, it's awful. This is the NBA Guys do not need 20 feet of space when they're shooting three-point shots. Clogging the paint to that degree is an overkill, and you're leaving players open to, to show you that they're pros. Damian Jones reminded us last night he's a pro, and we also reminded ourselves that we ain't doing as much homework as we should be on these players. Damian Jones has been hitting threes for this team since we traded him there. And if we would have just glimpsed at the highlights of them, just glimpsed, we would have known better than to play off of him like that. Because he's been hitting them that consistently. I've been saying it for weeks. And we neglected that. We ignored that. We didn't take Utah seriously. And we paid for it. Because we played so many minutes knowing that we had this game on the line with this energetic team coming at us. This Russell Westbrook energy train that's going to be coming at you. And Kwa Leonard who just lives to destroy the Lakers. Lives to destroy the Lakers. So at this point in time, I'm looking at Ty Lue, another person who would probably be extra motivated to beat us, another champion for our team, another guy we could have hired but didn't. Probably couldn't wait to see us in a game like this. Had this one circled probably for the last three months. So I'm looking at the Lakers and I'm saying, bring some energy. Play the players you didn't play. You'd be wise to play Lonnie Walker some tonight, you'd be wise to match up with Max Christie, especially on a guy like Nicholas Batum, who's older, who does not want to bang around with no young kids, nothing like that. You'd be wise to move Malik Beasley down the depth chart to the very, very back. If, you, if you're wise, you will know that that is the only place he can be most successful for his basketball team right now. And that's not disrespectful to him because you've been doing it to Lonnie and you've been doing it to Devon and you've been doing it to Max the whole time. You feel nothing for them. So it shouldn't be nothing to move him back there. I'm sorry. I don't I don't I don't do favoritism. I do wins. And it seems like we're moving in favoritism and that is leading us to. Well, barely getting by, barely getting by when you have a roster that can get a win a championship is unacceptable, obviously. But that's what we allow our coach to walk us into with these decisions. So that's where we need to, to, to make changes now. Please feature Rui Hachimura offensively a bit more. Now that he's proven himself to be somebody who can help us defensively, there should be no reason we don't put him in positions to do more of what it is that he ultimately does anyway. Seal him off on small players in the paint. It worked. We tried it yesterday. It worked. Get him in those mismatches and let him take advantage of people. He's stronger than a lot of guys that he ultimately is guarded by a lot of the time. I don't think any different tonight. 
if we keep him on the floor for a good portion of what he does and he's in rhythm, those Clippers are going to have an interesting time trying to guard him with Batum and Covington and those guys who he should be a little stronger than at this stage. So I'm looking at us saying, yo, if we could turn him into a 20 point score tonight, it could certainly help us. He may be the difference in the last couple of times we played this team. Obviously, we didn't have these trades in place. We didn't have the size and length to guard some of their players in the, in the ways that we're able to now. That was the difference all these years. It's the lack of wings against the Clippers who had those wings coming at us. We were guarding them with Avery Bradley and guys, and, you know, trying to trying to handle business with people that just weren't quite able to keep up with this particular matchup. But that ain't what it is now. You got Rui, you know, with the combination of AD. Hopefully Bamba may be able to give it a go since he was doubtful last night. I do still doubt that, though. But point is, we got Vando now. We should be able to throw things at Kawhi that he ain't been able to see these last 10 matchups. So I don't suspect that this will be the same go round, even though the odds makers have it so that the Lakers are losing this game by three. If you look at the numbers, we score more points than they allow. Just in general, since we made the trade. So that right there should tell you we should beat them if everything stands the way it should. Especially given the fact they don't have Paul George. They are rest. And the fact they ain't played in about three games, we played two games since they've played, that does concern me a bit. But it, it allows me to think that we may actually be in better rhythm than in some cases. It does go that way. So this is where my mind goes. If the Lakers can find a way to slow down Kawhi Leonard, because we know he's going to try to go for f at least 35 points tonight. He's going he's gonna to try to run up the score. He's going to try to be a surgeon. You got to put a wall around him early, and you got to make him... We got to make him deal with something. I, I mean, whatever the case may be with the defenders that we have between Anthony Davis and Vanderbilt, there should be absolutely no reason that he has an easy night tonight. You know, but if you if you play around with him and you put lesser defenders on him, uh, then then obviously the claw will do what the claw does. I don't have to tell you that playing stupid against him will get you beaten. So that type of stuff is like, look, y'all can. Live from behind the arc. We know shooting holds a lot of merit in this league, even to even now. And we love the fact that we have personnel that can hit shots. But if those personnel can't hit those shots, then we need to get away from the three-point shot because that's ultimately what has gotten us as far as we've gotten. We don't have bad three-point discipline. But last night, we jacked up the three with reckless abandonment. I think we attempted 35 of them, completely outside of who we are. And it was LeBron James hoisting 10 of them that hurt us big time because he only hit three of them. And as I always say, when a team has its own issues with other players who do the same thing, you can't cater to those issues. I've said that many times in different ways on this channel or about the Lakers. And this is yet the same thing. If 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 we're going to have Malik Beasley going 3-4-11, LeBron James is going to have to temper his three-point shots just off the strength of that. Now, if that player is not down there doing that, then your three-point shots don't hurt as much. But if he's going to be down there jacking up threes to no end, you can't contribute to the overall negative of our three-point shooting, man. Straight up, because we got to be able to let other players shoot too. And if you're missing ten, seven of them, Malik's missing seven of them. We're already minus fourteen as a team. That doesn't take. That doesn't make up for for Rui's misses, Troy's potential misses, Schroeder's misses. Austin has to be perfect for our team not to suck from behind the arc just because of y'all too. No, that has to stop. That has to stop right now. If you want to beat the Clippers, that crap has to stop. Not to mention that we don't rebound a lot of those misses. We do not rebound those. Those need to be Anthony Davis offensive possessions, Rui Hachimura offensive possessions, Austin Reeves offensive possessions. Those are our most efficient scorers. Dennis Schroeder driving at the rim. That's what works for us. He gets to the line. Salute to Kobe Minute. I don't have to tell you what all is on the line here, y'all. I do not have to tell you what's all on the line here. I turn this camera on at 824. That should tell you how serious all of this is when you look at the numerology of it all. You know who, who we need to be representing tonight? You know who would not take no crap from the Clippers tonight? I don't even have to say much else. I'm looking at number three, though. With all due respect to LeBron James, I'm looking at number three. I need Anthony Davis to step up tonight. He needs to be the best player on the floor tonight. I can't wait for LeBron James to outdo Kawhi Leonard. I need Anthony Davis to outdo Kawhi Leonard. Let's just be honest. As I said last night, there's a 
very, very clear pecking order on this team if we're doing things correctly. And we can't wait for others to tell us who we are. Anthony Davis is who we are. That's our number one bread and butter this year. If we're going to win a championship, it should be because he did things that he's been doing to help us win these last five games. 40 points and a bunch of defensive stats. And hitting his free throws. If we give him his possessions, if we get him his 20 shots up, which he should be averaging on our team, 20 shots. If he should be getting up 20 shots, that means that a lot of other people have to give up shots. But I think him with 15 feet away, with his little hook shots, or, or rather 10 feet away, with his, with his floaters, is the best shot we probably have on our entire team. When he's just dumping it, a little hook shot, with like within 10 feet, real close. No one can stop it. He doesn't miss it. Everyone in three-point shots should be that shooting right there. That, that should be that. Because at the end of the day, you got to show me Zubac can stop it. You got to show me Kwai can stop that. You got to show me Mason Plumlee can get a stop against Anthony Marshawn Davis. Because I don't believe they can. That's what it really come down to. He's going to have to give it a go tonight in this back-to-back for the first time in a million years. Because I don't think he's ever played in back-to-back. <laughs> Maybe not, not since he was a New Orleans Pelican. And he's going to have to play his best basketball game against the Clippers. In order for us to get this victory tonight, in my opinion. Because if we lean in on LeBron James and his three-point shooting and all that stuff he was doing last night off a of back-to-back himself, we ain't winning this game, man. Not against Kawhi Leonard. Not against that surgeon. Heck no. Nah, he smelled blood right now. And I ain't even going to talk about what Russell Westbrook's going to be thinking about doing. Hopefully, he has anxiety tonight since it's the Lakers. Hopefully, all them old demons pop up and we can get a victory tonight. Because quite honestly, I don't think he deserves all this redemption that everybody seemed to think he deserves like we were blaming him for nothing. He was actually turning the ball over. He was actually throwing the ball off the rim. We were actually losing basketball game. It, we weren't at fault. The fans weren't at fault. The team wasn't at fault. They gave him the ball. He didn't do nothing with it a lot of the time. Especially when Braun was on the floor. He clammed up. So I don't want to hear nothing about no karma in regards to him winning nothing. The only karma I know of is Kawhi Leonard and how he tried to snake us several years back. That's the karma I'm looking at. Them covering up our banners, Doc Rivers and all that nonsense, that's the karma I'm looking at. Hanging the balloons on Magic Johnson statues, that's the karma that I'm looking at. Not that Russell Westbrook manufactured nonsense that people are talking about when he was actually playing bad. Actually. What came first, the chicken or the egg? It was definitely the chicken in this case, because he wasn't playing well, and then people said, yo, he's not playing well. Literally. So enough. Enough about this. I'm sick of people saying, oh, Russell Westbrook wasn't the problem. The Lakers were the problem. What problem? We've gotten better since we traded him. Whose problem was he? Because as soon as we got rid of him, things were better. However that looked to you. So that needs to be said, man. There ain't no disrespect for the Russ, Russ, to Russell Westbrook. This ain't even directed at him. This is directed to the people that are saying this nonsense. These narratives. Narratives. They want us to believe we deserve to lose tonight because of some, because of him. Like, what? No, turn that around. That's not real. The reality was, we struggled. Small ball catered to why everybody was struggling. We didn't have a center down there. That didn't help either. Everybody served some of the blame, but he don't deserve to win no more than we deserve to for whatever it is people think we did to him. That's what I got to say to that. Nobody treated Russell Westbrook bad. He did not play very well, man. And he didn't handle him not playing very well, very well. So it was what it was, man. Leave that at that. And as far as everything else, man, the Lakers just got to go up there and, and play, man. Play. Just know that you could have did yourself some favors by getting some rest last night by taking the Utah Jazz seriously, and you didn't. So hopefully you do a little more homework on the Clippers tonight. Since you overlooked the Jazz, that should be what I expect to see, that you guys know everything about the damn Clippers. Lord knows you ain't do no homework on Damian Jones or Ochai Baji or Kelly Olenek. Jesus, they call themselves the best team in the league, going to win the championship, all this nonsense. Barely get out of there. Let the Jazz score 133 points in one overtime. And jack up 35 threes, probably only hit like eight of them or something like that. Just trash. And I'm supposed to be celebrating. I'll tell you right now, this team don't win tonight. It's going to be a lot to talk about in regards to how they handle this two-game stretch. A lot to talk about. And I tell you, man, I, I you know, 
This just goes back to what everybody else is saying. I've been saying this for a couple weeks now. But this is the real deal, man. Guys got to play through injury, man. Not like injury, but got to play through pain. Tonight is not the night to sit. I'm just going to call everybody out as a unit, the whole team. This is not the night to sit. If you can go, please go. Because this is the biggest game of your life. I'm just going to tell you right now. Anybody who may be a little injured tonight, this is the biggest game of your life. D'Lo, Bamba, anybody. <laughs> Austin, Schroeder, whoever may be feeling a little pain right now, this is the biggest game of your life. Because this is going to be the game that determines whether or not you have to play in the tur- play in tournament or whether or not you're going to be in the fifth seed or sixth seed. And in my humble opinion, that's going to be a big start for your path in the playoffs. If you have to play in that play in tournament, it's going to propel you into some different difficult circumstances that maybe you don't have to face. If you can get this week of rest that comes from capturing the fifth or sixth seed. It's a big deal when you're being led by Anthony Davis and LeBron James. You don't need to be playing no extra basketball. And you guys are the supporting cast on this team. The house that Kobe built, with all due respect to Magic and all those guys, it's it's his it's his place right now. When we talk about what we're thinking about, it's that Mamba mentality fighting through injury. You know, that's what it's about. So these, this is the big game he wouldn't have missed even if his finger was broken. This is the big game he don't miss even... If his shoulder was hurting, this is the big game. He walks to the free throw line and hits his shots, even if his Achilles is busted. This is that game. I don't know what that means to everybody on this team. Maybe they don't want to live up to those type of standards. Maybe they don't want to hear this from us, but this is who we are. So this is what you're going to get. That's what's in our hearts. That's what we remember. That's what helped us win. You're putting on Mamba skin every time you put on Laker uniform. So that's what I'm here to tell everybody. I want the Mamba mentality tonight. I don't care he didn't get no rest. He didn't get no rest either in a lot of games. He still had to go out there and go over work. I remember we had to go up against the Sacramento Kings. He had to have an IV after the game because he had had food poisoning or real poisoning. We never really know what actually happened there. But he went right back out there. He had lost like 20 pounds in like a matter of like two weeks. Still managed to give us what he had and we still won the series. So that's what I'm used to. That's what I expect guys to play through the pain because that's what it takes to win every one of those banners you look up in any arena you're going to see the sacrifices that some people had to make in order for their bodies to do what it is that it took wasn't nobody 100 percent when the banners went up wasn't nobody 100 percent. somebody had to play through something in order for them to capture that each and every one of them so if y'all want to be champions, y'all want to put up another banner or whatever, that's what it's going to take. d you want to be part of something special? Austin, you want to be part of something special? Y'all better lace up your shoes and let's get ready. What else are you holding it for? Maybe your agent, you know, I've heard conversations about d they, They're playing it close to the, close to the chest because it's, it's, a, it's a free agency year. You don't want to risk it. I respect that. I also remember d had some some concerns about his leg when we first drafted him. So I know that he has a different way to go when it comes to his medicals. But like I always tell people, what are you what are you holding back for? Who knows what's going to happen next year? What if your leg don't hold up even more so next year? You don't be in this type of situation. What if you get traded to a different team and they don't even make the playoffs next year? You don't know what other opportunities you're going to get to be able to showcase your talent in moments like this. These are the games you want to play in to show people you're worth the money. If you're holding back, trying to keep from not getting injured so that you can get the money they're gonna lowball you for not playing through injury when they needed you to play that's what i know they're gonna lowball you for for not playing through because they're gonna be like yo this old house that kobe built and you didn't play hard enough for them to win you didn't play through injury that's part of the game plan and it's not just the lakers let's say that it's the field that's gonna say they're like yo they didn't you know what i mean he the Lakers are a representative organization that this, this, and this, and that's what's required for you to be a Laker. Is to, you know what I mean? They're going to look at it that way. I know they're going to look at it that way because that's what's going to get them a discount. <laughs> you feel me? It don't even matter if they believe that. No, that's, that's what's going to get them a discount. So, so D- D-Lo needs to understand this. I don't know what his agents are trying to tell him, but I'm telling you, bro, you're going to have to either prove that you're healthier than we you appear to be right now because the overall consensus with our fan base is like, yo, this dude is not going to be healthy enough to do what we need him to do. 
He's amazing talent. We believe he can run the score up. He can hit a bunch of shots efficiently. We love what his game is, but like he just ain't going to be healthy. Every time there's a, some type of thing where we need him, he's going to choose his health over over us, over over winning. He's going he's gonna to play it close to the chest and just make sure that, that he respects his own thing. And that means he's not really with our organization. He's more so with the field, whoever will sign him, whoever will pay him the most money. So why should we have any loyalty to him? That's what it is, dude. Whether, whether his agents are despising him that or not, that's what it ultimately zooms out to be. Fan base ain't happy. Never mind what you're reserving it for. <laughs> like, they want you to play the big game, bro. Because we know we need you to win the big game. If you were somebody else and we didn't need you, it wouldn't matter. But since you are needed for, the, for, the, for what it is that we're trying to do and you're not going to be there because you're trying to do your own thing, that's how you're going to be viewed as a dude who's doing his own thing. Not as part of a team. So that's what D'Lo needs to understand as he as he continues to go about his process. You know, and it's different for you than AD, bro. They ain't going to do it the same way. They ain't going to care the same way. That's another thing. It's like, now nah, you can't play the same way AD do. It ain't going to work that way. <laughs> they just not going to respect the same way. So that's what I got to say, man. I, I, I know that D'Lo's probably doing what's best for his health. I just know what job he's got. You know, I know who the employer is and I know what they want. And it's like, bro, if you're trying to get a job with this team, you got to do the opposite of that. You got to play through injury. Not, not reserve yourself at all costs, especially in the big game. Hell no. Nah. The big game? Oh, no, 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 no. You can't do that. You won't get it back with the Lakers. Not the one you want. They may value your piece, but if they can't rely on your piece, they already got two unreliable pieces in AD and Braun with the health. They can't do that with you. So that's what I'm saying. He needs, he needs, to, he needs to figure out his plan. If his future is not with the Lakers, then that's just what he's showing us. That's all he's telling us is that my future ain't with y'all. My future's with the field somewhere, so I got to stay healthy so I can re-sign with somebody. That's all he's telling me. That's all he's telling me. Because if you devoted to us, you're going to play through this. Because that's what we need. You feel me? So that's the hey, It's whatever you want to say, bro. It's whatever you want to say. It's your world, d We just in it. But anyway, that's what I got to say about that. I want the Lakers to win tonight. Obviously, I'm a bit pessimistic. But I, at the end of the day... There's a part of me that thinks we're going to end up winning this basketball game because we really need to, and we really do have a, a massive advantage with AD in the paint. And when you consider the Vando process there, if he's available, Braun should be available regardless he's going to play. I just think that our size is different. The Hachimura factor, and you put in Troy Brown with his length, who will likely be on the floor. Whether he's playing well or not, the length will help us match up in ways that the Clippers and the Lakers just ain't being able to match up the last 10 times. We look better on paper than we ever have going up against this team. And they are missing a big part of what it is that they'll need to beat us. And you throw in Russell Westbrook and the wild card factor. You don't know if he's going to play well like he did against Memphis or if he's going to play poorly. Like maybe he get, did against one of the uh, OKC games. This is one of them situations where it's like you're not really sure if you're the Clippers, if you can count on Russell Westbrook to, def to, to help you when you don't have Paul George. One thing I want to say is uh, respect Bones Highlands getting better right now in their system. He's hitting a lot of long shots. He's making some really nice passes as well. He has some point guard skills that we need to respect. Um, so I expect him to have a big night tonight. Bones Highland. Uh, Zubats, obviously, he's got to play well, so I expect him to. He's not somebody you want to take lightly. We know Zubats about as well as anybody knows Zubats, so let's just respect who he is and know that if you send him to the line, he's going to knock down his free throws. And it's a good free throw shooting team. Even though Mason Plumlee is somebody you probably could send to the line and feel good about. Other than that, you don't want to play with this team in that regard. They hit them. Man, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm tired of this team giving us so much to love and then doing stuff that just plays it to its own weaknesses. You are the Lakers, man. I don't need to live and die with any three-point shooting when I got all of the talent on this team that I got, there's a million and a half different ways for this roster to score. And we lean on stuff that gives us very little probability of, of scoring. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And it makes you think that this is being done on purpose sometimes. Because I don't know how else to look at stuff when it really comes down to we talk about it every day. Professionals got millions of dollars wrapped up in it and they still choose stuff that just doesn't make any sense. That, that, that otherwise caters them to them losing. So I saw a lot of that last night, and I got a lot of that on me as I'm thinking about this team today, just 24 hours later. And I want to say something about the schedule makers. This is some bull crap, bro. You know LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, and players like this do not 
farewell and back-to-backs. Why would you put meaningful back-to-backs at the end of the season? And you know this is going to be the scenario. You create this crap. You, schedule makers in the NBA, create this crap by putting the, the teams in this situation and then forcing these players to have to come back after t- less than five hours rest off a plane ride and play a meaningful basketball game that you know you've positioned the league to, for this to be a meaningful basketball game. Anybody and everybody knows that y'all position this this way. You ain't going to fool nobody here. Nah. I just think the NBA needs to stop with the, with the corniness and do what's best for these players. You're wearing their bodies down with this type of stuff. So that needs to be said. At any rate, now the ball goes up. The Lakers need to do what they need to do, man. This is the, most, the biggest game we've ever played against the L.A. Clippers. The Clippers have never won anything, and they got a chance to. Paul George is not out for the season, so if we can get this victory, we will really help ourselves in regards to whether or not we have to see a full Clippers team later on. Hopefully we push them back down the standings, have them pay, play a difficult, difficult path, because that's what they deserve. So that's what I got to say, man. Los Angeles Lakers, it's a road game, man. You're not at home. So you should play better, because <laughs> Anxiety Arena always makes it so that this team shoots worse. But it's going to be a clip of four. So hopefully it feels like a different building, you guys. And we continue to getting victories on the road. So that's what I got to say. And everything else, man, you know you're going to get something different from me. I ain't going to come up here and be like, oh, my God, we played so well. I heard the team making goat sounds last night like LeBron James did something last night. He played one of the worst games he played last this year last night. Why y'all sitting up there goating him? Nah, that wasn't the night for the goating. Just because he hit a last shot? Hell no. Nah. You see all the mistakes that man made? This was the night you have to hold him accountable for those mistakes so that he bounce back and play better tonight with some killer instinct. Got to push the right buttons with people. This was not the night to praise LeBron James as the greatest player of all time. He didn't play like it. Having to play all them damn minutes against a Utah Jazz team and barely had no, no players of cachet on the floor. Best player on the floor was a player we gave away. And we sit up here screaming, goat. Not that night. So nah, I'm, I'm different, bro. I, nah, I'm different. We're going to win a championship because we're going to keep on focusing on these weaknesses. We're going to keep on holding people accountable while everybody else is celebrating. That's how we're going to win. We ain't going to sit up here and act like things is good when we play like trash. We play like garbage. They're lucky to get a win. Don't let it be tonight, though. The biggest seat, biggest game of your life, Lakers. Don't let it be tonight. Come out there with some real intensity and some confidence. Play loose. You're going up against Westbrook. Take it to him. He ain't... We know Russell Westbrook. We know what buttons to press. Press them. Simply put. And respect Terrence Mann's corner three. The boy been hitting the corner three for the last three, four games consistently. It's falling. Nicholas Batum, you leave him open, it could be your doom. Put a hand up. He hit 10 of them in a game or so a couple games ago. Put a hand up. That's all I ask. Got a chance to get five. Fifth seed, man. It's on the line. We can get that. And I know a lot of people want to run from the Phoenix Suns, but y'all know how I feel about Phoenix. They're shallow. They don't want to see us in a seven-game series. I want that spot. And I think we deserve it. After all we've been through, we deserve it. And plus, we win this game. We got a chance to see what the Suns look like. We're going to see them in the very next game. So anybody who's afraid of the Suns, we're going to get a chance to see them. We'll see how we match up with them fair and square very, very soon. But for the time being, we got a game to play against the L.A. Clippers. A team that thinks of us as a rival. And so expect their best. Play your best and you'll get the victory. And most importantly, do not forget, this is still a must-win situation. Yes, we've clanked the play-in tournament status. I want to congratulate us for that too. We cannot fall out of the play-in tournament. So that's good news as of last night. Very good news. But we can still get beat in the first and second game of the play-in tournament. It will be out then. We don't want no one-game situations. Not with our injury stuff, not with what we got going on, not with how we rotate. No, we don't want no one game situation. So let's get this victory tonight. Beat these, this team tonight. Be motivated to shut Russell Westbrook up tonight. That's what I got to say. Kawhi Leonard deserves every bit of losing we can provide him. He has given us hell. So let's return it. BDL 44. Thank you all for watching.